I'm calling the Governance Organization Legislation Committee to order at 1040 on September 11th. Uh, we have a quorum and this is being video recorded for later playback on, I believe, the town's website. Um, our first order of business is the candidate statements for publication that we presented to the town council at the September 9th meeting. Um, and so we're gonna talk about what we heard from them and what we might want to propose for revisions prior to bringing it back on September 23rd to the town council. Uh, I don't think anyone is connected. I am not connected. None of us are. This is like for the last time on our computer. If I, if I hit refresh, it'll, it'll, oh, it'll okay. disappear. It's just, but I can't open the folder. Because there's no one in that page that's still a town council. Right. Um, so I have so you just tab. my copy on my computer. Um, okay. I'm not sure if I can. Miss, I'm not sure without an internet connection I can pop it up onto the monitor. Um, if I could, I would try. Um, Explain why I can I can log on with my so I can read everything on my phone. Are you, are you connected to the Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi or I have a GOL. Are you on? Yeah, I just went to uh, SharePoint and opened up the GOL folder and all of Mandy's stuff appeared. Yeah. And I assume if I click on it, it'll show up. I'm but are you on the town Wi-Fi on your phone? Uh, I'm using the town. I go to the town's. What is it? The town council website. I'm using the but what, what is your phone? What is your phone using? Your phone using? Uh, it's cellular, I guess. Okay. Is that, yeah. I'm sorry. So my, my ignorance is, is a bit more. So if you have a hotspot, you can also go to the Okay. All right. I'm in. Oh, wait, I got this. I'm not here. The Jones have no idea. Magic. Yeah, the Jones I had problems connecting to this morning, so. Um, and I don't think without my connection, without a connection, I can't can connect I into the screen. Phone? Yeah. Because I would otherwise, I would just pop it on the screen what I have. Um, but I don't. It's not detecting another, because there's no wire, wireless. But anyway, so I, I have a copy on my computer. Um, and then it's, are we looking at the policy? The policy on that the publication on publication of candidate theory. statements that we were looking at on Monday. There's no changes to it right now. We're trying to decide whether we want to change it. So I have one requested change that um, kind of relates to it, but not really at all, which is there's been a request by a counselor to change the title to instead of just policy on the publication of candidate statements to policy on the publication of candidate statements on the town bulletin board in accordance with charter section 7.6 to clarify why we have this policy right in the title. So if everyone's okay with that, I'm gonna make the title insanely long. That, that's a lot. Make a list of I did not name any names, Evan. <laughs> 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 I did not name names. <laughs> we are on video. Um, so I am making that change. Oh, I should actually. Do 
see this with changes because we should be tracking our changes on this document. So, okay. Yeah, so, um, and I will save this as a different one. And if I ever get out onto, you know, Wi Fi, I will upload it. Um, So that's one. The one of the other things that came up um, was the we had two sort of things. The active hyperlink was one people were really concerned about. Do we want to propose a change to that and come back to the council with a different of that? I I think what people were talking about was instead of having it active under the name, it would just be a text URL that sits under the name before the statement so people can see what the URL is and have to copy and paste to go to it instead of just click. George, you're okay with that? So that would ref relate to what candidate statement means, and since we're all having problems connecting to things, um, that's paragraph two, which says the phrase candidate statement shall mean the following, and number B under that is, or letter B, a hyperlink from the candidate's name to one web page. the candidate shall provide the URL to the web page. The first sentence needs then changed to a text only, URL period below okay yep the name of the candidate I shall so a is the name of the candidate as it shall appear on the election ballot B right now is a text only URL do we want to dictate I where I don't think we need to I'm, I was just gonna leave it at that right so right now B would now read a text only URL the candidate shall provide the URL period, I had to the web page, but if we're just, the UR, I, I would just say provide the URL instead of to the web page, just a text only URL, the candidate shall provide the URL. Does that sound like good language for everyone, mm -hmm. for that change? Um, we had questions as to why it was 900 characters. Was this 2B? This was 2B, mm -hmm. yes. Um, we had questions as to why 900 characters, but everyone seemed okay with the length from my memory. Yes, um, so it's one more clarification on some of right. the things going on. But you're good with this stuff. Link, not hyperlink. Um, Andy said that he didn't want a definition of bulletin board as number one. It should just say the website. So um, the second half of number one, after we define what the charter says, which was recommended by the town attorney, by the way, um, is the sentence, it can be found at http colon slash slash www.amherstma.gov slash bulletin, which is now the bulletin board. So I think that actually does kind of comply with what Andy wanted. I don't know whether we would rotate the two. So would What's confusing, though, is that will this actually, they're going to create a separate web page for this, right? It has a link from the bulletin so board. So I guess the bulletin board will just be like, here's where you find candidate statements. candidate statements, right? But they're not technically, the statements themselves are not posted on the bulletin board, the link to the, the web page. It, it's a weird, yeah. it's a weird Thing, but I guess it's it's fine because it'll be there. It'll just be confusing because eventually that'll get pushed down as we add more things to the bulletin board, okay. as opposed to just it's on the website. But yeah, or during election season, it's always the top one on the bulletin board, and then okay. non-election okay. season, that link gets pushed down, and two years later, you push that link back up. So that was that one. And then the final one is. Um, so we, should, we agree to do that? What do we think? I think we're not changing it, right? We're, we're leaving not changing, it. Are we not changing it? We're not changing the language, right? I thought that was what 
everyone seemed to want on that one. Um, the final one for this was um, the filing, or no, um, was the distribution of the URL to submit the statement, so to the form. Uh, there was some request to not distribute it all at once to everyone who's filed, but distribute that link as people take their papers out. And so we should talk about the timing of the distribution of the URL to the form for filing, submitting the statement. Right now, we have it being distributed the day after nomination papers are due to only those who filed nomination papers. Pat? So I don't, I don't have a strong preference, but I, I do see the merit in when you pull papers, they give you a whole, they give you all the campaign finance stuff, right? You, you get a whole bunch of information when you pull, not when you, when you file, you just say, here it is, and that's fine. But when you pull, you get, so to some extent, it might be useful to include it in that packet of, hey, if you actually do end up filing, here's how you do the campaign finance stuff, here's how you do the candidate statements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the policies, per this policy is going to be handed to them when they pull papers. So the question is, how do you get the URL to them? You can hand them something they can type into a document. The, the form URL, yeah, the form URL. You could, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it, it just, to me, there is some logic in giving them everything. So would we then the be distributing it electronically too, or? or just on a piece of paper that they have to then type in the URL? I, to some extent, I think it depends a little bit on what the URL looks like. Because if it's just amherstma.gov slash candidate, then you can type that in. If it's like mm. some long URL, then that's obnoxious. But Mm, they savvy, might not get to the form. Savvy web user. <laughs> they might not get to the form. They might get to the page. But maybe the PDF. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'd like to see the the form URL emailed to candidates. I'm not so concerned about also shipping out a URL on paper at the time they pick up. So we could put if if the URL is going to be static, we could put it on the policy or yeah. something. That's um, Yeah. I think, I think maybe it could be the URL is on the policy that they get right away and they could be told, look, you can, you can do this now if you want. And then it could still be emailed out later. So here's a solution. Instead of changing paragraph six, which is the no later than 5 p.m. Amherst local time one business day after the deadline, this is the one where they email the URL, we can add to paragraph 13, which right now reads, the Board of Registrars shall provide all persons requesting nomination papers with a copy of this policy with the relevant dates at the time the nomination papers are requested to add a copy of this policy, the relevant, the dates, the relevant dates and the URL for submitting the candidate statement at the time nomination papers are requested. Turn that into three things. So it's not necessarily, if it changes, it's not changing the policy. It's here's the three things. Oh, yeah. So that would now read a copy of this policy, the relevant dates, and the URL for submitting the candidate statement at the time the nomination papers are requested. And so now you've got, it is going out by email at a certain time in case people want to click, but they'll have it earlier if they want to submit it earlier. Are there any other requested? Oh, um, 
Alyssa also s talked about she would ask that candidates be able to submit more than once. Do we, as a committee, wish to take that issue up and potentially modify the proposed policy we're going to put out? Right now, we have um, candidates, what do we have? Once submitted, person shall not be permitted to revise the candidate statement. Evan. So I think, and I want to, because I had actually talked with Alyssa a little bit about this um, beforehand, and her intent, because I want to make sure it's clear, was not that a candidate statement gets posted and then someone says, eh, never mind, I want to change it, and then we go and we replace it. I believe her intent was once it's posted, it's posted and can't be revised. But if you pull papers in July and you submit it in you know, August, and then you go, oh, I want to change it in September, and it still hasn't gone up, then you just resubmit the form, and they would just take the most recently submitted form. But I don't think the intention was for them to be able to edit it once it's posted. I think it's the ability to send a new one and revise it before it's posted. I, I believe that was her interpretation. Because for me personally, once it's up, it's up, I think. I don't want staff to have to go through and be replacing and editing. But I guess I do understand the merit of if you submit it in right away and then later you go, huh, that messaging isn't really working while I'm knocking doors and it hasn't gone up yet, maybe I'll alter it. It's not hard for staff when they get them to just say, well, this is the most recently dated one and we'll put that in. I just don't think in. that's the job of compliance. You know, in other words, this is one, this is one And use your mic. This is just one piece of many, including the link to the URL. So I would say caution what you put in here. And so the other thing is we, people use this to position, like, oh, everybody's talking about whatever. And I'm also talking about that. Maybe I should reposition myself. So I don't know. It's just one, one tool of many. And I don't think this would become the camp. That said, I did ask for individual revisions. I know the other side comment. My husband did all the screen signs. He didn't have to. <laughs> Others? So I'm not sure where we, we stand, though. <laughs> I mean, we've got. Steve? Yeah, it was three minutes or three minutes or five minutes, whatever it was. One take. One take. Yeah, that was it. That was true for everyone. It sounds like maybe we're set with one and done, even if it hasn't been published. You get your one submission. And so that means the clerk's office, if someone, because it's a URL that in theory is going to allow multiple submissions unless it's set up to right. do IP addresses, but you could just hop to a different one. Um, you know, they take the first one submitted, not the last one submitted, if someone attempts to submit multiple. I, I just don't know what's technically possible with a form on the website of to whether they could prohibit it. I guess if you have to put a web, an email address or something in, you might not be able to. I, I just don't know whether they can, they can set it up for one. 
versus. Yeah, so so I, I just don't know what's possible with IT, but if we have the policy that says once it's submitted, you can't make changes, that would be to tell IT, you take the first one that was submitted, not the last. If they submit multiple, you accept, you take the first one. Steve. Well, maybe the, like let's put, pretend that I put up something to us, then maybe I, at least I have the option of deleting. So maybe you can't edit, but you can delete. Like sometimes I'd rather go with no statement rather than this dumb thing that I wrote in the middle of the night. I just, I, I like the simplicity of one and done. Okay. This, uh, number nine, once submitted person okay. shall not be permitted to revise the candidate statement, number nine. So, any other requested changes based on your own thoughts or what you heard at the council meeting? So therefore, I'm gonna ask for a motion to recommend the town council adopt the policy on the publication of candidate statements on the town bulletin board in accordance with charter section 7.6 as revised at today's meeting. Do I hear a motion? Uh, uh, sure, if I'm the ma motion maker. I'll make it recommend. as revised on line 11. Okay, so I'm making the motion. Who's seconding? Second. Steve? I second. Who wants it? Pat seconded. Okay. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> did, are you seconding, Pat? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That is unanimous 5-0. So can Evan. we talk um, just briefly about, I'm assuming you're writing the motion for the council? And that yes. motion will have to have dates that contradict the policy. Can we talk just a little bit about what you're proposing for that motion? Yes. Thank you. Um, let me pull up what the dates would be, since I have to get that. Um, so the dates under the policy, the dates are that the email, the, the URL email needs to go out September 18th. Um, we're not even going to vote before then. Um, Deadline to submit is October 3. Um, ballot names is October 4, is when ballot order is decided. Uh, candidate statements would go live on October 8th, and the election is November 5. So, um, what I will do is tomorrow I will submit the revised revisions here to the town manager so that he has a copy and ask him to determine when a URL can be determined for emailing to candidates. Because um, uh, until we know, we can't email a URL until we have one. Um, I guess what I'm thinking is potentially the URL as soon as they can get it out after the policy is adopted. I don't, we can put a deadline on that, but um, if they can get it out the 24th, if we adopt the 23rd, it should go out the 24th. Um, the, the form URL. I don't see why the form URL can't be ready on the 24th. If they know about it now. Right, if they know about it now, the form is easy to create. It's a name, it's a text URL, and it's a 1,000 char 900 character limit that, and we can talk about some more stuff, but you know, the form itself is not hard. Right. So I would, I would, probably ask the town manager to, to confirm that a URL could be created and determined and be emailed out to the candidates on the 24th. Um, or if we wanna give an extra day, the 25th. 
um, of September instead of what would be under the policy the 18th. 25th, 24th, what do people think? The meeting's the 23rd. If they know about this today, these forms don't take a while to put together. There's no reason that, they, especially since we simplified the hyperlink part, mm -hmm. I, I don't see any reason why they can't already have the form built by the town council meeting on the 23rd and send it immediately out, unless we hear from OIT. Uh -huh. from my, that it's like, it's not. So I'll, I'll aim for a deadline of the 24th in the motion, um, but I will definitely check with the town manager to, to make sure that that's okay. I'll give them what deadlines we're hoping to do. Um, submit candidate statements. If it goes out to September 24th, right now under the policy, you'd have until October 3rd, which is three and six is 10 days. It might be nice to extend that a little bit farther, um, simply because it hasn't been widely known, so people might not have been thinking about this. Um, I'm not sure how much farther people would want to extend it. The third is a what day of the week is the third? Oh, I'm back off. What's the third? It's a Thursday. Um, so could we maybe give them till that Monday? Um, so the Monday would be the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, right? And the Monday would be the seventh. So the seventh, the proposal would be to sub submit the candidate statements by the seventh to be on the first live. Um, we were originally giving three business days for the IT department to get it live, which is why that was listed as the eighth, because there's a weekend in between. So the seventh would then put, if they put it by Monday, um, that would put it on Thursday, or we could have it go live Friday, 10th or 11th. We could probably still keep the the tenth as a go live on a Thursday, if everyone submits by Monday. Mm -hmm. Yep, Evan. Because they'll have ballot order on the third, right? On the fourth. On the fourth. They'll have ballot order on the so fourth. So once they have that, they can literally create the website, and all they have to do is mm -hmm. move the text. It, it shouldn't take very long. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't want to dismiss the workload, but. If, if it, things are done in advance. So AIM proposed the 10th to the town manager, as, which would be the three days after submission. So email, URL email out by the 24th. Um, submit the candidate statements no later than the 7th to be on the first page up, and the page goes up on the 10th. So that's how I'll write the motion as long as I get the okay from the town manager that that's doable by staff. Yeah. Sound good? Mm -hmm. So that's the plan. Um, okay. Thank you, Evan, for reminding me about those dates that need changed. Um, anything else related to candidate statements? Seeing none, we're going to move on to item agenda three which is continued discussion and possible vote on a town council policy for resolutions, proclamations, commemorations, and citations. Um, there are a bunch of documents related to this. The first one is the revisions to rule eight, and I'll go through which four they would be. I'm, I think we've got all four available. Um, Revisions to Rule 8 of the Town Council Rules of Procedure, revisions to GOL guidelines for review on clarity, consistency, and actionability, revisions to the GOL committee charge, and then the creation of an FAQ for the public. Mm -hmm. um, the, when we last discussed this, um, we had 
a tentative sort of what we were looking for in this policy that these proposed revisions are based on. Um, and it is to include as a guide, you submit to the town council president and the clerk of the council the resolution proclamation four weeks in advance to ensure that it can get through the process mm -hmm. by the time you want it through the process. But that was a guide, not a, you can't do it after that. Um, we had talked about GOL seeing everything um, and we had talked about requiring a resolution proclamation or some, uh, those four to have a specific counselor sponsor them. And if there was no actual counselor willing to sponsor, then they need to go through the um, petition process in the charter to bring it forward. Were, were the guidelines we had talked about that these proposed revisions are based on, obviously, we can discuss as we see the revisions, but that's, that's where these came from. I know that was a long time ago. So let's start with rule eight, the rules of procedure. Um, I have in the packet, it's just a copy of rule eight that was last adopted in revised, uh, the August 15th revisions. I'm not sure there was any revision to rule eight for clerk things that we adopted two nights ago. Um, and the draft I came up with, and you can see since the prior revisions weren't adopted, this one's showing old revisions. This is how long ago I did this draft. Um, but we're looking at the highlighted, the yellow highlighted proposed revisions. Um, and I would go back and put it into the correct current version of the rules. Um, and that is in 8.1a under non-emergency measures, proposed, the addition of language, proposed resolutions, proclamations, commemorations, or citations shall be introduced either by a council or sponsor or in compliance with charter section 8.2b, 8.3, and 8.5, which are the sections that you could go about proposing under the charter. Um, so that was the language that I came up with attempt to come with, we're gonna require a council or sponsor these, these items. Thoughts? on continuing to require a counselor to sponsor them? I mean, that, that's, that's sort of, and then if we are, is this language okay? That, that document, Evan. That one, yes. It's an old version because we've modified the rules multiple times and I just never went and updated to the correct current rules to insert this language but it's the yellow highlighted language. There's a couple of them. Okay. Yes, Evan. So I, I like the idea of a counselor sponsor because I think almost anything that goes before the council should have a counselor sponsor. Um, I am confused why charter section 8.2a is not seen as applicable here. Mm. 8.2a is um, the non-required action. 8.2a is single petitions, the resident petitions, action discretionary. And so if it's submitted there, we're, since it's discretionary, we don't have to act. This, this would take away, I, I guess the way I'm thinking about it is 8.2a doesn't require the council to act and if there's no sponsor, this, the person putting forth the petition wants to require the council to act, which means it has to be under 8.2b, because if it was under 8.2a, as many of our proclamations have been, they just find a sponsor. And you get, you get a counselor to say, sure, I'm okay with putting my name to that resolution. And so to me, 8.2a of the single sort of one where the action's discretionary doesn't really apply to this, to what we're trying to accomplish with this rule. Yes. So basically this is, and I would, I'm not proposing language revisions, but this is basically saying the council must act on a resolution, proclamation, commemoration, or citation when it has a counselor sponsor or one of these. Because in theory, someone could still submit a resolution under 8.2a without a counselor sponsor. It's just we would be free to ignore it, but they could still do it. Yes. Right, right. And, but if they don't get one, they could still submit it 
and then we just have to decide whether or not we're going to take it up. So this is just, that's still a pathway for introduction of a resolution proclamation, commemoration, and citation. It's just these, these are the two situations in which the council must act. Yeah, I, I, I like the council sponsor thing. You know, I've made that clear for a while now. But, um, but I do think uh, resolutions are a little bit different than proclamations. I do think we would there's some education that would be required for that because I think when it comes to um, what we're saying is Black History Month, Tibetan, what it, right, all, the Puerto Rican heritage, they need to know now to reach out to someone to find a sponsor. And I don't imagine anyone would not sponsor those, but they just have to know so that's why that fact sheet is going to be really important because they have to know that now they have to actually find a sponsor, which is, it doesn't feel like an extra level of bureaucracy because those won't be hard to find sponsors right. for. But I almost see, foresee much of it being they reach out to the clerk of the council and the president and the president says, I'm the sponsor for all these standard ones, you know, which, yeah, you know, and if they're, for some reason the president says no, then they go to someone else, but I almost see some of these most mostly yearly standard ones as the president automatically saying, I'll be the sponsor, and I'm going to introduce it. Um, so is everyone okay with the language then? Okay. The next language that there were two other things to add, um, 8.2, the referral of measures, um, added a new F uh, under bylaws. Um, which is resolutions, proclamations, commemoration, commemorations, and citations. All resolutions, blah, 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 shall be automatically referred to the GOL. Uh, the president shall notify the council of the referral at the next regular council meeting. This just clarifies the president has been referring them to us now under the current F of the refer a measure to the appropriate committee if the measure is deemed to contain minor requests for action. So that's what she's been operating under. This would just essentially say, no, it's just automatic. It comes in, it goes. Mm -hmm. um, we could, now that I'm thinking about it, um, all resolutions, well, I wonder if we want to say satisfying section 8.1a so that all resolutions that already have a counselor sponsor or are submitted under that get automatically referred so that we're not dealing with stuff that don't have sponsors. So complying, I guess we should say, com I would add in complying with rule 8.1a shall be automatically referred. Mm -hmm. Everyone ready to move on to the next couple things I attempted to add? Uh, 8.4, discussion of measures. Um, so I added commemorations and citations to the exceptions of when we aim to talk to about them twice. Just added to the list. Mm -hmm. Any discussion on that proposed change? And the next one is under 8.6, consideration of non-emergency measures prior to vote. Similar to the bylaws, I threw in this one of resolutions, proclamations, commemorations, and citations that we shall not vote on them until they've been considered by GOL. I don't know whether that's actually something we want in the rules, unlike bylaws. Um, if something comes so late that we can't, right. this, this may actually hamper the ability to um, so this is one I think we shouldn't just push right on through and say maybe we want an actual discussion on this because I know there's been concern about whether we should even be reviewing some of these in the first place. So thoughts on including this or deleting it? Um, George? 
Well, it just makes clear what we, I thought, as a body, thought should be the case, and then it needs to be discussed by the uh, by the full council, right? So if it's there, people can talk about it. And we're okay with it still being there? So if, I guess the solution is, if I'll leave it there, and for, for now it sounds like everyone's still in agreement with that. I'm, I'm just gonna put out for the video and public's purpose, if for some reason it comes to the council so late, the council, there's no charter requirement that this happen, which means the council can vote to suspend the rules to formally not comply with the rules. There's always an, a, an ability to suspend them if the resolution didn't come in time for a GOL to have to review it prior. Evan, to suspend? 8.6, two thirds of the full council may vote to waive the following requirements. Yeah. So, yeah, so you can always vote to, it would be by two thirds, but, okay. So those are the only changes I could come up with based on what we had discussed last time. Does everyone, is everyone okay with those for now? Are we ready to vote to send them on to the, or do we wanna vote a full package after we review the other documents? I think this one might be the only one that has to go to the council beyond our GOL charge. So, do we wanna vote separately? Vote each one separately? Yeah, Evan. So, because I wasn't here on the 21st, which is I think when this was last discussed. Um, but, and I haven't looked through all these documents yet, which is my shortcoming, but um, the, the idea of having them some amount in advance, there's no desire to have that actually in the rules. It's gonna be in a policy. It would be in the FAQ. In the FAQ, so we didn't wanna actually build it into the rules. I the request for a, a, how far in advance we receive these, we didn't want to build into the actual town council rules about these. Mm -hmm. There was a discussion about that? Right. I think the thinking was if we built it into the rules, we would have to waive it every time something wasn't met versus just in handing people who are saying, oh, I want a citation for this, how do I go about it? We can say, hey, if you want to guarantee it gets done in time, we need it four weeks in advance, otherwise you risk not getting it by the date you want it. Um, but I think we were wary about the formal require, making it a formal rule. Okay, so I think the decision was to vote these separately. So we have, um, at this point, the rule eight changes, rules of procedure. And I know they are right now on a document that is not the current set of rules, so I will transfer them word for word to the right document for presentation to the council. It's just, they, this is how long they've been sitting here with us postponing this discussion. Um, so the rule eight changes, I think the motion would be a motion to recommend town council adopt revisions to rule eight relating to proclamations, etc., resolutions, commemorations, and citations. Um, revisions to rule eight proposed at the 9-11-19 GOL meeting relating to proclamations, resolutions, commemorations, and citations. So I guess since I just came up with the wording, I'll make the motion. I second. And George seconds. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. That is a unanimous vote, 5-0.
I will discuss with Lynn when this can get on agendas um, as we move forward. So that's this one. The next one is the um, GOL guidelines for review on clarity, consistency, and actionability. Um, this is this one does not have to go to the council. We can just adopt these changes if we desire. Um, and this one was a change to actionability. Um, and a measure will be found actionable if it does not conflict with MGL, the Amherst Home Rule Charter, or any other law, bylaw, or resolution applicable to the town of Amherst. That's how it currently reads. The proposal is to, after the Home Rule Charter, add into the list of things we are looking at actionability for, town council policy, which would then now include our rules of procedure, um, or any other law, bylaw, policy, or resolution applicable to the town of Amherst. So we're attempting, essentially, expanding what we can consider including the rules of procedure or our flag policy, um, the public ways policy, things like that. Um, thoughts? Town council policy and then after law by law, the word policy are the two additions. That's it that I could come up with when I was looking at this one for changes. Any thoughts? George? Town council policy versus policy applicable to the town of Amherst. Those are clearly, those are clearly two different Baskets, or could you just say, just drop town council policy? I, I guess they are. The town just council policy is a subset of yeah, policy. Yeah, that's the only thought I had. I yeah. mean, maybe you want to mention it anyway, but it does seem a little bit um, um, repetitive, potentially. It's not a big deal. Um, but you have policy twice, and one reading it might think, well, there's town council policy, and then there's policy that's applicable to the town of Amherst, which would seem to be town council, would include town council policy. Yes. So that would be my only suggestion. Would You could just get rid of town council policy. I don't know what others think, whether they feel like it needs to be mentioned or not. Do the rest of the committee feel it needs to be mentioned separately, or do they agree it's a subset of the word policy? Is everyone in agreement with just deleting that proposed addition, town council policy? So we're gonna reject that. And so now we just have the word policy being added in. Um, does that sound, is that a, anyone have comments on that one? going on there um, okay so I s hear no comments so we are going to then vote on revising this oh sorry Pat So it's there from our original drafting of this with the original charge. Um, we have a couple of revised charges out there. Um, if we go to the document in our packet that's GOL charge revised 522 draft revisions on 815 for proclamations, um, you'd have to download it to see the revisions. There are two sets of revisions. Um, Evan, this is the one that we had proposed to have revisions to that was brought to the council and the council pretty much kind of sat on it and didn't want, gave us nothing, didn't seem to want to act or anything. Um, this adds changes to that. 
Um, but if we were able to get our charge changed per this, um, there would, well, I'm, I'm looking at it. I think we ended up not proposing policy reviews in that change. Um, we can revisit that. Yeah. So, so I, our, our future agenda items is to come back to that. So, so I, will, I will move that up into a sooner future agenda item to come back to that substantive revision of our charge um, for that discussion again. Um, and then talk to the president, depending on what we do, on when we could get that on mm -hmm. a council agenda again. Um, but for now, that's why that is in our operations policy, because it's not just part of the charge. So we're still looking at um, the document on guidelines for review to add one word. Do I hear a motion to revise the GOL committee's guidelines for review of bylaws, resolutions, and other measures? I think Pat moved that. I will second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. The aye, that is a 5-0 vote. Our guidelines are revised. I will get them posted or ask someone to post them to the website with the revision. Um, because that's this one. Next is the charge. So when we're looking at this charge, I didn't have to highlight anything to show you what the new changes were because Evans, if, if, it see, if it looks as if it's Evans changes, if you can see the changes, it's what we proposed to the town council already. Um, if they say Mandy's changes, it's what I was proposing to add, but I will directly read what I'm proposing to add to this draft charge and proposed charge. We've already voted the prior proposed revisions, this would add to that and then try and get us back to the council, but it sort of is just sitting here and holding right now. Um, and it would be to the third bullet point, and the third bullet point right now, our proposal that we've already agreed to push or forward to the council says, review measures, parentheses, including bylaws, committee charges, resolutions, but not including proclamations and citations, and parentheses proposed for action by the town council for form content and all the rest that we didn't actually change. The proposed change now would have it read review measures, parentheses, including bylaws, committee charges, resolutions, proclamations, commemorations, and citations, but not including financial orders and parentheses, proposed for action, blah, blah, blah. Now, I know that goes a little bit beyond what we had discussed because I added into this proposal the financial order thing. We have not been reviewing them. I was thinking that really does belong with FinCom and only FinCom, um, so that's why I was like, maybe we should, as I'm writing this stuff, just start exempting that from us, because um, it is technically a measure, and let's just say we're not seeing them and we don't want to see them. Um, so that's why that is in there, even though I, it had not previously been discussed, so I wanted to point that out. Um, but that's the proposed addition change alteration to our already approved proposed change that we as a committee had, had approved. Um, so are there any comments, discussion on that proposed change? Seeing none, I think the motion is to again recommend to the town council that the GOL charge be revised in accordance with these changes. Off the top of your head, you don't remember when we voted to revise this, do um, you? May 22nd. I think, I assume that's what the title says, revised May 22nd. So I'm assuming that was the date we voted to revise. 
Um, so it would be revisions to the revisions, um, which means I can probably pull that last vote language. Um, so motion to recommend revisions to, G yeah, it was May 22nd was our last vote on that. And the motion was by George to recommend the revisions to the GOL charge to the council. Um, and it was a unanimous vote. So I guess the new motion is to recommend the revisions to the GOL charge to the council. It includes those already and we're just re-revising it. Um, do I have a motion? So Evan is going to move that. Um, is there a second? Pat is seconding. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye and raise your hands. Aye. That is a unanimous 5-0 vote. And again, I will work with Lynn on maybe we can bring this up, but I won't do that immediately because I'll try for next meeting to get a yet again discussion about GOL's charge on policies so that maybe we could bring them all up together. And I'll hunt out some of our previous drafts of what that language may have looked like. Um, so that then brings us to we had an FAQ on this. I think it is um, titled Resolutions, Proclamations, Citations, and Commemorations FAQ. This is drafted by George. George, do you want to explain, summarize? Well, um, I was asked to, or I volunteered to uh, create a draft of an FAQ um, that the public could access and guide them um, and answer any questions that we could imagine they might have. And so that's what I've done, and it's now in front of you. It's a draft. Um, any changes, corrections, whatever, are very much welcome. Um, I don't know if people have had a chance to look at it much. We could go through it. Uh, we've talked, I think, about the first part before definitions. But again, I don't know if everyone is present for that discussion. But we talked about simply defining. So number one simply says, what are these things? And we define each one. Number two asks, um, how can I get one of these things before the council? And um, what I wrote here is the easiest and quickest ways to approach a counselor and ask him or her to sponsor it. And then I thought there should be a link to where the current list of counselors. Second way is to present a resident petition and see charter section 8.2, signed by at least one resident of town and submitted to the council president. Um, and here you can correct me if I've missed I may have misunderstood all this, but um, this is that kind of petition can is purely at the discretion of the council, right? Yep. Um, and uh, I don't think I have the third way, do I? So I, I think I, think I would add recommend add yeah, adding, adding in, in um, yeah, you know, the third. I would almost put the second way is I'd put that as a new paragraph, maybe. Um, the easiest way is that if you cannot find a counselor to right. sponsor. Um, you may, I don't know what the wording would look like, um, present a resident group petition under Charter Section 8.2B, mm -hmm. um, which requires so many signatures. Right. And then the council will be required to act. All right. And uh, that would be it, those two, right? Yeah, I mean, there's others, but those are the easiest, yeah. so. Do, are you looking at deleting the the single petition? Right. I think we can leave it, but I, I because it says it's purely the That's discretion. Right. So I, you know, if you so one it would be three there. The second one would be eight point two b, and then I could add three. I see three. Yeah, Evan. It, I mean, you could say something like to ensure action by the council. The easiest and quickest way is to approach a counselor. And then, if you cannot find a council sponsor, you could do this, and then you could, and then later you could say, um, you may also present a resident petition, but this action does not guarantee the council will take it, or something to differentiate these things. Like if you if you want to make sure this happens, here's the two ways you can do it. 
If you don't want to do either of these two ways, you can do this, but there's no guarantee that we'll take it up. So you had said to ensure action by the council, the easiest and quickest way is to approach the counselor and ask him or her to sponsor it. Here's a current list. Mm -hmm. I would actually say a second way is, and then that would be 8.2b. Second way is to present a group petition. See charter section 8.2b. Signed by at least, I, I think it was 150. I'd have to check. 150 mm -hmm. voters, right? Mm -hmm. Voters. Yeah. And then that gets presented to the clerk and the president? Or does it, it, is it spelled out there? It's spelled out in the charter. I that's why you say it doesn't, it's, you know, if you really want to know all the details, go there. Um, I'm just trying to mirror your language here because no, then no, I can no, forward so, out so, this, so. this revised language. Okay, so we'll just say it's signed by at least 150 voters. Um, Evan, what was, how did you say? And you may also, you may also present, present petition. may also present a resident petition signed by at least one resident of the town and submitted yeah. to the council president, but that, but yeah, but action is purely at the discretion of the council. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm right now creating a revised document. Okay. Um, we'll bring it back next week, but at least it'll show what we did so that everyone can see it and we'll try to vote next week. Um, how long? In advance, okay. No, I'm sorry, not next week, at the next meeting, next meeting. Um, how long in advance, so you can continue. No, no. Yeah. Um, so the next is how long in advance must resolutions, proclamations, citations, uh, and or commemorations be presented to the council? And so again, read this over and see what you think. Since they must be first reviewed for consistency, clarity, clarity and actionability by the GOL, they should be submitted at least four weeks before you wish the council to formally act on them. It's a custom uh, for GOL or a custom of GOL to ask sponsors to be present when the committee conducts its formal review. Failure to attend, while not required, could further delay the review process. Do you want to be that? That's what mm, I think. I, I almost want to delete those last last two sentences. Because right. we right. haven't been asking partially because we're not even sure who is bringing them to the attention of the council, which makes it hard to then go back and forth. Um, although we can change our custom. If we really want that to be the custom, What I thought was evolving was a uh, situation where people would come to, before us and we could have a back and forth and we would help them uh, to say where they might, you might have some concerns or problems and we could resolve it with them present. We didn't require it, but we would prefer it. And for many, this simply may not be relevant or uh, may not happen, but it did seem there would be somewhere it would very, be very relevant, right? Um, and while they don't have to be present, um, we would, it would be helpful for us and for them if they were present. Is that? I mean, at least for resolutions. I mean, some of these, yeah. you know, I mean, the, the Puerto Rican day thing or whatever, they probably don't need to be present. And, uh, but, I mean, if they want to be present, that's great, but. Yeah, yeah. Evan? So I think that maybe we want to say, so my, my first thing is, if Mandy Jo could please add the Oxford commas and that would be great. Um, yep, <laughs> will do. My, but my more substantive thing is, um, it hasn't necessarily been our custom, so I think maybe deleting that and just say, GOL encourages mm. sponsors yeah. to be president when the committee conducts this formal review, and then we, and, then, and may request sponsor attendance? I think there's something that we encourage them to go, but there might be some situations where a resolution comes to us and the sponsor is not here and we literally go, we don't even know what this means, and then we might actually reach out. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not crazy about the last line because it, it sounds punitive, but, mm -hmm. um, but maybe that's what, maybe we want that. Um, I, you know, I think we also recognize that um, how we just set things up, and many times the sponsors will be counselors 
Yeah. So to date, the sponsors have been sort of, I almost said normal people, residents. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> but but in, in the future, if they have a counselor sponsor, it, we, we, it's, we're probably asking the counselor to actually show up, but that would be the sponsor. So, or the sponsor, or the counselor may, you know, Pat may say, you know, I actually would really like the person who brought this to me to show up. But so there, there's the potential for multiple sponsors, I guess. It, yeah. You know. So we, yeah, maybe we just need to figure out and think on some wording of that. But I like the reformatting to encourages. Yes. yes. And then figure out how to reference who we're encouraging. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll make a note here. Is there any type of consensus on the last sentence? The failure to attend sentence? I mean, it does seem to me that, <clears throat> at least for some of these, if someone has, is not present, we could very easily be in a situation where we just don't know what to make of it, mm -hmm. or we have just practical questions. And um, what would that would mean then? We would go forward, we'd either just, we'd have to go to the council and say, we can't, we can't recommend this at the moment because we, uh, um, it, I guess it would be clarity, or I, mean, I guess one of the three, um, or it could just be we can't recommend it because we don't understand it, or we have some basic substantive questions and the uh, the petitioner or the sponsor is not not responded. I, I don't know. Um, I don't want it to sound punitive. I don't want people to think, oh my God, we got to be there. But it is kind of reminding them that if they really care about this and we have a problem, we can't solve it for them. We can't rewrite it, re-edit it. Um, that's a that's a no no. What about sort of a preface phrase of in some circumstances or occasionally or I don't want to say in rare circumstances, mm -hmm. but 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 indicate that you know on occasion failure to attend might further de might delay the review process, something like that. Not further delay, but like mm -hmm. in some circumstances failure to attend delay. might delay. delay the review process or something. Do we want to put the in some circumstances or just failure to attend might delay the review process? I, I kind of like the, the, the limiting phrase so that it, I, I almost think it sends a little bit of a signal of most of the time your attendance is probably not going to delay anything. It's not going to be necessary, but occasionally it is going to affect it. Um, and we can't describe when or what, but just know. So in some circumstances, mm -hmm. failure to attend, okay, number four, George. I think this is um, pretty much geo, just okay. boilerplate. And we could take it out or we could make it, put all the language in. What criteria are used by GOL in reviewing resolutions, proclamations, citations, and or commemorations? GOL does not address policy. Again, that we, there may be an issue there. It looks only to see that the submitted text is clear, consistent, and actionable. See GOL frequently asked questions for further clarification. The only thing I'm gonna request is that we hyperlink to the FAQ. Exactly. So I've just added that as Thank a note you. in that's to add the right, hyperlink right. so, so that, that they can just click on it. Exactly, <laughs> right. That's And the next is what happens next. And again, it says after its formal review, GOL will forward the measure to the full council along with its recommendation for action. Usually it would be taken up at the next council meeting, but agendas are set by the president of the council and the president may use his or her discretion in playing, placing items on the agenda. Okay. Why, finally, why might the council not act on or approve a resolution, proclamation, citation, and or commemoration? And this one, again, I think we really do have to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. But it is assumed, by me, that such measures have <laughs> some, direct, some direct bearing on the town of Amherst and or its residents. <laughs> See, you should never, never let me do this. Uh, but this is good, I mean, you know. Um, <laughs> measures which do not. <laughs> you know, 
but I think this is healthy. Anyway, measures which do not meet that admittedly very broad test <laughs> would likely be rejected or not acted upon, at least by me. But final discretion is up to the full town council acting in light of the recommendation of GOL. So I think it's something we should talk about. Obviously. <laughs> Evan, you seem to have some thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> well, Evan reads it. I, I guess I would think to potentially add something about the council not agreeing with a potential policy proposed in the resolution or proclamation or, you know, the underlying policy, it's always possible that there isn't a majority. I don't know how you'd word that, but, but addressing the, hey, you might not have counselors that actually agree with what you're proposing and that is a way, a reason we wouldn't adopt. You might not have a majority of counselors. I mean, I, I like this language about, well, we're hoping it bears on Amherst. Um, Yeah. Uh, right. So for final decision is up to the full town council, acting in light of the recommendation of GOL. Um, and I, I would leave it pretty vague. Sorry. I would leave it pretty vague and pretty general if you feel that something like this is appropriate. I, I feel it is, but that's just me speaking for myself now, that I'd like to make some, you know, just out there to the public that, you know, this should have some bearing. In the end, probably anything people bring forward, they'll argue, has some bearing on the town of Amherst or its residents, whether it's about nuclear war, or whether it's about, you know, whatever the, the issue happens to be. Um, so maybe this isn't really, we could just get rid of it. Um, uh, I don't know. Evan. Or Pat. Pat looks like she wants to say something. Mike. 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 Use your mic. I will not get yelled at by another counselor. <laughs> I, I, as somebody, I know George has a different opinion in some ways about resolution measures like these. Um, I think they're important and I don't want residents to feel that there's some litmus test that mm -hmm. they have to pass. Mm -hmm. So I have um, a little bit of trouble um, with this. The, I mean, if it, what would not pass this broad test, but there's something a little um, condescending as sweet as you are, George, about that line. Mm -hmm. um, no. uh, Other thoughts? I'm struggling with this one, to be honest. I, I, I'm struggling. I think that um, the, the entire reason we're doing this is there is a request from the council to have such a policy, and uh, that request came most strongly from Alyssa, who felt that in her experience they received proclamations, citations, all of that, that they were like, we're not gonna act on this. And so I, I do think to some extent there may be some merit in forecasting to people the types of things we expect proclamations, resolutions, commemoration, citations for um, so that, you know, we don't, but I also don't wanna limit people's ability to submit them and then we just, vote them down. So I guess there's a couple things here. So one is why that might the council not act on or approve? So those are very different things. Mm -hmm. And so approve is, is, I don't know, you know, we're gonna, not acting on it is different. And in fact, we kind of, we kind of gave the impression that 
as long as you get a counselor sponsor or 150 signatures, we will act on it. So it seems like the only reason we wouldn't act on it is if they don't do those two things and then it's sort of up to the discretion of the president. And I don't know that we're dictating for the president how to choose. And, and there's some, that, that's tough to do, right? Um, to choose whether or not to act on it or not. Um, and, and I actually think GOL at some point has to take that charter, have a discussion about 8.2a, because you know we've received things that we haven't acted on and others that we have, and mm -hmm. I don't, it's the president's discretion. Anyways, that's a whole other discussion. Um, but this does seem like such a broad test that I don't even know what would to, to me, we're also reading this, direct bearing on the town of Amherst or its residents. So would that flag resolution have met this standard? Well, it depends on how you define that, right? right. I mean, in if my, we have view, residents no. of Native American heritage, maybe that, that is that a direct bearing though? I mean, it's, it's, so it's one of the, George, who I know likes for rules to always provide clear guidance to people, this this feels to me like it's open to such interpretation that it doesn't necessarily say anything. But I do kind of like the idea of giving people an idea of what we expect these things might contain, what would be reasonable to submit versus Joe down the street convincing me to do a commemoration of Joe for being awesome, right? Like, that you probably wouldn't want. Is is it possible then, instead of to ask the question, why might the council not act on or approve a resolution? Instead of that question, mm -hmm. maybe the question is, what resolutions, proclamations, citations, and or commemorations are appropriate to submit? Or, you know, I mean, that's, that's then getting into a uh, definition, you know, um, of what or, you know, I'm not even sure that's an appropriate question to ask, but maybe that's more of what this answer is trying to get at than yeah. the question that is asked. Steve. Well, maybe another approach is to say these are the resolutions, proclamations, citations, and commemorations that have been passed. Oh, so. Can I, you know, examples of prior yeah. resolutions, proclamations, citations, and, and, and we give two or three examples of each kind. Of course, then we fight over what the examples used are, but, um, but maybe that's a solution, George? I'm sorry, I run it, I, my mind was elsewhere for a moment. If you just, just rim that by me one more time quickly. So in, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I think Steve's proposal yes. was to delete six yes. and instead give examples of resolutions, proclamations, citations, or commemorations that have been passed yeah. by the council. So for citations, it could be the one citing the service of the VFW chairs or president, whatever they were called. Um, you know, resolution, we could give a, you know, the 100% renewable as one, but also something else. It was the Trump one or the town meeting passed. Um, but, you know, or drones or something, um, proclamations, the Heritage Day or the LGBTQ mm -hmm. Day, um, mm -hmm. and commemorations, mm -hmm. I'm sure we've got some example somewhere. I, I don't think there's any reason, I, I don't think listing a list is, is, is really going to be that helpful, um, personally. But I, I want to sort of defend this a little bit more, um, uh, because... Um, I, you know, we're the town council of Amherst. We're not the United Nations. We're not the legislature of the state. We're not. And um, I guess I do feel that when people bring these sorts of things to us, there should be some connection in some reasonable way to uh, the town and its residents. And while that's a pretty broad, uh, you, know, cat you know, it covers a lot of ground. Um, I kind of would like, I just feel like it would be worth stating, if I can convince the rest of you to agree with me, um, keeping the language broad in general, not trying to scare anybody away, but just tell them, look, we are the, the town council of Amherst, okay? We're 13 people. Um, and, um, you know, uh, we can think of some examples, as Steve suggests, 
And what might be something that, I mean, you think of the flag, uh, flag resolution, think of the Tibetan, you know, we have a Tibetan community in Amherst. The flag is the flag of the state of, of Massachusetts. It flies in this room. It's here in this room, right? I believe. Yes, yep. there it is. Right up um, there. So, I mean, you know, that's arguably relevant to, I mean, so whether I agree or disagree with that particular resolution, it seems to pass a very broad test. But it does seem that there can be things that, at least in Alyssa's experience, um, which is far greater than, than, than the rest of us, there have been things in the past that have come to the select board, have come that just seem totally inappropriate. Um, and so I guess this is my, you know, clumsy attempt to sort of say, look, um, you know, this is who we are, and so there should be some, something that connects us to this as the town of Amherst, um, not as the human race, not as, you know, we're not the town council of, of humanity, we're not the town council of, of the world, we represent this, these, the people of this town. And so if you're bringing us something that, that really doesn't bear on, on uh, the residents of this town in any reasonable way, please don't bother us, okay? That just, uh, but we're not gonna list a bunch of things that you can't bring, and we're not gonna list a bunch of things that have been, you know, we have accepted. It's just sort of, a, you know, it probably will have absolutely, absolutely, it wouldn't have any impact probably on the very kind of people that I'd like to deter. <laughs> so you might argue that, you know, it's just a waste of, uh, of space and time. Um, but um, I just feel strongly that, look, um, I mean, that's why I put it there. Steve. Yeah, so these are all reasons to vote no or to vote yes, but I'm not sure they're reasons to keep the council from seeing the resolutions. And I, I think that we will disagree on, yeah. you know, whether, like the flag thing is perfect. Like that's not really our purview, but if 350, once, however many communities there are, all pass a similar resolution, that sends a really strong message. Mm -hmm. But the, um, where was I gonna go with that? Scanning, like the ones that I think would be completely inappropriate that we believe that Springfield should have more something. They should, Springfield, more yeah, more trees. Telling some other so community that, or mm -hmm. right, country but or whatever, what they should do. Those are so ridiculous, I don't think we'll ever get those, but I right. think that everything yeah, else. <laughs> yeah, I mean that actually is, I mean there, there could be things that Springfield or whatever should close their blank because. <laughs> so. I'm looking at our time and our agenda. Um, it sounds like we need to think about number six more as each individual. Um, so I would welcome at our next meeting multiple versions of what number six might look like. Feel free for people to bring them and if you want to send them just to me, I will then create a compiled document of options so people then can see them, but without knowing who brought what. Um, but think about it, see if you, anyone's got some suggested wording or what we could do about this question that is asked here, splitting it up, not splitting it up, a potential other question of what is appropriate, like what, I, I, the more I'm looking at this, I think this is a document that does go to the council for adoption, not just us. Um, as us saying here, we're putting out an FAQ. I think this is something when we bring the rule eight changes to the council, we bring this and say, you guys asked for changes. Here's our, our changes here, but we also created this document that we would like the council to adopt as its sort of FAQ on this agenda item. Does that sound like an agreeable plan to people? I don't have a problem present, showing, telling them what we did and having them read it, but I'm a little hesitant about giving them the final say. I mean, it's after all, this is, right? What so do you, we do have a recommendation about four weeks in there and that that's not in any of the rules. Some of the others are the rules, but um, the definitions so we come to them and say, here's what we've created, what are your thoughts? Or we come to them and we say, you know, are you, you approve this or you don't approve it? And I guess um, I feel again that we definitely listen and objections we would take very seriously and we would, you know, maybe go back and revise. Um, and so maybe the difference isn't that great, but I just am kind of a little, T touchy about this idea that somehow everything we do has to go back to the council and they have to say, oh yes, that's okay. 
um, they should be informed and we should, and there should be conversation. Um, I don't know, maybe others feel differently. In the end, maybe it's the same. In other words, if we go and they, they don't like it and they say, and they vote it down, they'll obviously tell us why and then we have to go back and fix it, so. I don't know, maybe Shall we hold this, that portion of the discussion too until next week? Since we're not gonna be able to finally act on this document. Evan, you wanted to say something. I, I guess it can be held until next week, but I had two other probably small changes I'd okay. like. Mm -hmm. One is in the definitions. Um, so things like a resolution is a formal expression of opinion or intention made by a formal organization, a legislature, a club, or other group. Could that just be by the town council? And then a proclamation is official declaration issued by the town council to make something like the the people who are issuing these. It seems like for, if this is for the town council, it's yes, a person to person. Yes, that that is a sensible okay. suggestion. And then my one other one, which is honestly minor, but we should be modeling best practices. Yes, is instead of him or her, could we just use a gender neutral them? Right. Sure. So absolutely. Um, ask the them to sponsor. Them. So that's under two. And then the other one is yep. wherever the president is. Fine. Um, yeah, no, right, that was exactly. in uh, uh, four, right? Five. Okay. Five, right. The president may use their discretion. Right, there. Okay, fine. That's good. And so I will send this out to George since George created this initially. Um, okay. I'll probably accept all of these changes that I've been doing so people can see a clean copy too. But I'll, I'll get you the word to George okay. um, so that you have. And then you will post it? Um, this will be posted to this one with six still there with nothing there. Right. Um, and the changes that we've been making yeah. will be posted for everyone to view. I, I guess, yeah, yeah, so it needs to go to George. Who's going to come up with a better wording about sponsors in number three? Okay. I guess that's why. Yes, I'm sending it to George. Right, right. The comments that right. I added about those, you'll deal with, okay. except for number six. That's everyone's agenda. Right. Um, and then you can post it to the next Fine. packet um, as non-track changes or whatever. Um, okay, so that moves us through number three. Um, to number four, which is the full public waste policy on flag raisings and commemorative flags. And there is no draft changes to this yet. There is just some, here's what's been going on. Um, and there's a whole bunch of documents about here's what <laughs> exists. Um, so the current public way policy is in there. I don't think we need to look at that directly right now until we figure out what we wanna do. Um, we have George's drafted Town of Amherst flag policy, the document, and then there were some PDFs that had select board essentially packet items that George in this Word document attempted to summarize. So that's, that's where we're sitting, so I think we should all just be looking at the current Town of Amherst flag policy doc X or whatever, and when it has the Word document. And George, do you wanna talk about this? Yeah, again, I, I just tried to, and the summary really, um, yeah, it's a summary of what I got from looking at all the documents that Mandy sent me and that the town, um, that Angela forwarded from Paul. Um, and again, we should look obviously with great care and make sure I haven't missed anything. I think there are a couple of things already that are not quite right. Um, For instance, uh, Puerto Rican uh, flag, how long does it fly? <laughs> and we've made a decision uh, our, on our own just on Monday. So, um, but they're essentially, as far as flags go, there's the, uh, the UN flagpole that we have some say over, and this is what currently flies um, on those two poles. Um, and it's poll number two, but I've numbered number two, um, that uh, has options. And this lists at the moment what I understand to be what uh, is put up. And um, I'm not clear on how long flags are supposed to fly. Um, it doesn't seem to be, um, it seems to vary from 
instance to instance, and that's fine, but there's no, I assume the Black History Month flag flies throughout the whole month, but I don't know that for a fact. Uh, maybe it says it somewhere. Um, then we have commemorative flags that uh, are put up, what is it, seven times a year? Um, and the one that was most contentious was the one uh, re regarding 9-11. Um, and I just make a, a note that this list should probably include Bunker Hill Day, June 17th, as well as Presidential Inauguration Day every four years, because there's a select board policy to that effect. Um, I'm not aware of any formal written policy, which is why you're getting this. <laughs> um, and if there is one, it'd be nice to find it, but I don't think there is. Um, and so uh, I've just found a few items that I, from these. So the only one is specifically had to do with the half staff. What, okay. what are they, right? And that was a decision by a former town manager. Um, and um, these decisions largely seem to have been made by the select board over time. And they've changed their minds as you, if you go through all these documents. Especially with 9-11, they changed their minds a lot. Um, but half staff seems to be under the domain of the town manager, which seems fine. Um, and we apparently, according to Paul, we get directives from the state, we're on some kind of listserv or something, which tells us when um, certain fl the flags are supposed to be flown at half staff and for how long. And then, as I mentioned, one of the ironies of all the, at least the 9-11 policy, or the policy is that the select board adopted the policy on the day before 9-11, which is the one quoted here. Yeah. That was voted um, on the Monday before, that day before. Um, so this isn't a policy. This is just a summary and description. Um, I imagine at some point we could try and turn it into a policy. Um, it probably should be looked at by Paul at some point to, to make sure that, that this is what he understands to be the case uh, and that it bears resemblance to reality. It uh, does, I think, Alyssa would point out that our policy then does it have immediate impact on town staff because they have to take the flags up and take them down. So I think in one case the flags are kept up for a fairly lengthy period just because it makes it easier for them rather than having to take them down and put them back up. Um, so, um, I don't know what thoughts people have having looked at this either now or previously, um, but what I tried to do is just hopefully accurately, but I'm not convinced of that, uh, summarize the current situation and give you a brief summary of the debate over the 9-11 flag or the 9-11 policy, um, sort of what the one view was versus the other. Any initial thoughts? Well, if there's a question mark there, because I really don't know that's true. <laughs> so the Tibetan one flew for a full week. Yeah, that was for based, week. The Tibetan one flew for a full week based on the proclamation we passed. The Thank Puerto you. Rican Day one will fly for a full, full week, week based on right. what we passed Thank two you. nights ago. I think the LGBTQ one flew for a full week based on, I, the, I'm not so sure So again, if what. I look so, at the proclamations, I figure So I think, right. yeah, yeah, I think we need a policy. I think our policy should be what, you know, we need to amend the public way policy. One of the things as George was going through, I heard the town manager domain of half staff. We should probably put that in the public way policy, um, that, that the half staff is, we're ceding to the town manager, the decisions on half staff flying the U.S. flag at half staff. Um, and I think for the polls, we need a specific policy 
that policy could include if we're going to put special flags up, it needs to be within proclamations initially. Um, one benefit of something like that would be that a person that wonders why we're flying the Japanese flag or why we're flying the LGBTQ or why we're flying the Puerto Rican flag can find an actual proclamation that spells out why the town council voted that instead of just, well, the town council had a motion that said yes. Um, I, you know, and I think that gets also then to potentially the free speech areas of, well, we've just said proclamations need a counselor, 150 signatures, and then we voted that to either pass or not, and oh, the flag wasn't part of that, and it didn't pass, so the flag doesn't go up. So I think we need to turn what you've written, which George is a fantastic summary of where we are, um, and, and all into who's in charge of what, when they're in charge of it, how it looks, for the decisions, um, either I think it can be a some a partially part of the current policy we've adopted as revisions, mm -hmm. and partially as a separate. Here's the holidays that are just adopted, um, and maybe that's a separate resolution that says here's the town council adopting a resolution of commemorative flags. Be it resolved, will fly these days the town manager is in charge of figuring out the logistics around that. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's drafting a separate resolution for the council to pass for flag raising mm -hmm. for these things the um, yeah. uh, in perpetuity one that says from now on and until amended. Until amended. Yeah, yeah, these are, this is our resolution for these flags. Um, mm -hmm coming back and turning this into those two or three documents that we need to send to the council. Right. Um, yeah. All right. Um, I'm happy to work with you. I'm happy to try and do it myself if you don't want well, to. Well, yeah, I think you've got a lot you in your, it. yeah, no, um, exactly, right. I think we should try and share some of the burden here. Um, um, so we'll, you and I will speak, yeah. and if, if you'll perhaps provide me with a model I can follow, but I should, uh, probably continue to carry this on until okay. either it's no longer being productive um, and just makes sense for someone else to, to pick it up. But let me try to craft something and let me work with uh, um, Mandy on this, yeah. I guess this makes sense to me. Does do anyone think? have um, any suggestions of what might go into how long would our standard policy be for raising a flag on flagpole to the UN poll? Like, is there some that we don't want anything less than a day or anything less than a week? Like, it, or, or does anyone have any potential, or we could just let George come up with some potential guidelines and present it at the next meeting? I think we're linking this, we're linking this to a specific town um, uh, resolution, right? There must be a motion or something by a sp the town council with a specific date and language which we assume would include um, a, a flag, mm -hmm. right? And that would also include, I assume, a length. There might be a standard length that we will adopt just for the sake of, there might be reasons at some point to make it shorter or longer. Okay. But rather than maybe ma saying it must be X length or Y length, um, just assume that um, whenever these resolutions are passed by the council, it would include, um, you know, how long it would fly. Okay. And it, as you said, it's possible that there might be no, I mean, we might say we're gonna, you know, recognize X, but there's not gonna be, a, you know, there's no flag connected to it, but. So we're gonna leave this, oh, Evan? Sorry, I haven't had enough coffee today. I'm trying to wrap my head around what we just, what we're deciding right now. So it sounds like we're saying that we're going to revise our public ways policy to specify that the flagpoles and what goes on them is the purview of the town council. We're also going to have a resolution or an order or something, or I guess it would be a resolution, that would say, henceforth, these dates fly these flags and the town manager and staff are responsible for putting them up. And then we're also gonna have some third policy that's maybe part of our proclamations policy that basically says, if you want a flag that isn't covered by this resolution, which of our like 
Fourth of July, commemorative flags, all of that, then the intention to raise a flag and the dates need to be embedded within a proclamation that's adopted by the town council. So there's, is that mm -hmm. the, what you're envisioning as the three? You said at some point two to three different documents. Are those the three? I'm trying to figure out the logistics yeah, I was here. hoping it could be done in two. One of revising the public ways policy to deal with when we keep the decision, when the town manager gets the decision, because that sounds like there might be some decisions we won't see, like half staff, mm -hmm. if we want to push that off the town manager. Special flags on pull two, us. Um, you know, commemorative flags, us. Mm -hmm. And then we'll, and then maybe it needs to be in the, um, we just adopted rule eight changes, but I, I, I think the public way policy might be able to somehow distinguish that flag raisings, you know, adoption of raising or agreement to raise a flag or that passage would be included in a resolution. You know, so it wouldn't be a standalone motion. It would be be it, a, a be it resolved resolution. Um, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what it would look like right now, but I think we can have that one and then we can have this, the resolution that we'll create for the current sort of standard policy for the commemorative flags to sort of reestablish what the select board policy was mm -hmm. on the commemorative flags that are out flying today, actually. Right. Um, and, and so that there's sort of a new start to that policy mm -hmm. with a resolution. Um, there might need to be a couple resolutions depending on what we do, but I think mm -hmm. that's the one. And then maybe revisions to our own FAQ on proclamations, resolutions, we you might be able to add a, a question yeah. to that FAQ we just said we'd talk about next week, next meeting, on what, how, I've seen flags, special flags flying in town, how do, how do I get that to work? Um, that could be potentially an answer within that if we're going to try and put flags flying into resolutions, we could add that to that FAQ. So that might be the third document, potentially. Mm -hmm. I think we have to see something with the changes and the proposals in writing. This gives us, though, a fantastic thing of where we are. Yeah. So. Thank you for that, George. Um, any other questions before we move on? No. So that's four. Five was work groups. I'm going to postpone that to the next meeting um, to, for us to re-talk about based on what the attorney, town attorney said and what was said at town council um, before we bring it back to the council for a second reading. Uh, six was the referral that we just got Yesterday, we'll do that next meeting. I'll put that up higher so that we can get that back out to the council. I think we can deal with that next meeting. Public comment, I see none. Um, adoption of August 25th and September 4th minutes. We do not have the September 4th minutes, so we are only looking at the August 25th, August 21st minutes. Let me rephrase that. So, um, so do I hear a motion? I would move on that, that we adopt the minutes of the August twenty one meeting. Is there a second? So that was George and Pat. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 That is five zero. We will get to September 4th next meeting. Anything not in, there is one thing, it's not really not anticipated, but it's not something, it is schedule, a meeting schedule. Um, I am going to cancel the October 9th meeting. It is Yom Kippur. And so we will not meet on October 9th. Um, I'm waiting so long to cancel because I'd like not to have to reschedule that meeting. I'd like to just be able to cancel it. But if we need to reschedule it, my schedule requires that it be rescheduled on October 2nd. Um, so I, I want to just sort of get to people. Um, does, does that date work? Does that date not work? Because um, if not, that solidifies a decision as to whether we reschedule or not. Um, 
You're asking if October, I'm sorry. You're asking October if October 2nd, 2nd is available. It is available for me. So not for Pat, Steve. It is available for you. So it's going to be tentative. I would still like to not have to hold it, but I will make that decision after our next GOL meeting, which would give me about a day, two days to post. Um, but please put it in calendars. Um, as tentative? As tentative. And I'm sorry, the next meeting is the 18th? So our, no, our, no, next, our, no. Next, our next GOL meeting right now sorry. is the 25th. Yes, thank you. We have a meeting on the 25th, um, and we will tentatively schedule a 10.30 to 12.30 meeting on October 2nd. Yes, Evan. Uh, question number one, just because I missed it. George, you moved the minutes. Who seconded? Pat. Second thing, since we're putting off work groups, then do we know that the council is not taking work groups up at the 23rd meeting? Uh, agenda setting is today. So, I so will, you'll tell Lynn I, we're not ready? I will tell Lynn we're not ready. Since we didn't get to it. Any other questions, comments? Then we will adjourn the meeting at 12.26 p.m. Thank you all.